What's up, y'all? We are uh, actually getting prepped for live right now. I'm gonna kind of do a twofer where I'm actually doing a video while I'm doing a live because I kind of have to do both. And uh, it has to do with crystal doorknobs and mortise lock refurbishing. So that is what this video is gonna be about. We have a bunch of painted up uh, not really antique. Some of these are kind of newer antique, I would call them. And uh, some of them are real deal. So I'm just going to go through them all, take them apart, uh, expose whatever needs to be exposed, whether it be... Why do I have a key cylinder? There's our obligatory siren for the video. Uh, but yes, we're going to be... We're going to be taking apart these. Uh, running, you know, different things to make this as quick as possible because some of this paint is going to take a minute to get off. Oh, there's the bolt hidden behind 53 layers of paint. So let's fix that with all 12 of these locks. Here we go. We're going to take a look at these mortise locks we have six right-handed and six left-handed and i believe they are all going to be uh deadbolt style but obviously we've got a live running here as well so in the live we're going to show it uh 5, layers of paint that we're going to be dealing with with these fellows and uh the profile of the key let me get make sure that we're up in camera so the biggest deal that you have with these antique guys, aside from that, <laughs> is the hub is the biggest problem. And uh, Night Owl works with these a lot too, so he is definitely familiar with this. These are single lever, almost always single lever uh, door locks and unfortunately we had a casualty during shipping because the customer sent these in these are beautiful beautiful <laughs> which camera do I use I don't know uh, these are beautiful knobs I love these knobs for sure um, compared to the other ones I've, I've still got a bunch of the the conical shape up there um, but we do have a little bit of, a little bit of paint going on on some of them and uh and actually i think wes was here when i first unboxed these oh shoot 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 look at this how did uh, so is this what happened there okay we need to go through some of these um but with antique locks most of the time this is what you're dealing with so you're gonna have Go ahead and see this left-handed guy. Um, let's go find our casualty because what I'm going to do um, for this is actually scoop this back a little bit. So I'm going to raise my voice just a little bit. Air conditioner. It's getting, once we get past this heat spell, y'all, and we start getting cooler, we won't have that irritating noise in the background. So I went to the dollar store and had metal pans for a dollar so what i'm gonna do and i can't do it i can't do all of them but what i'll do is i'll separate out each one because each one's gonna need the scraping and soaking and bleh, bleh, you know bleh, 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 bleh. checking up on and i don't necessarily think that i'm gonna need to keep because there's supposed to be six what was this is this a uh, left or right? Okay. We'll take this one out here. Is this the... Uh, no, that's another left. The only thing I'm concerned about is if I run up on one that is different. They all look the same, though. Um, however... Jeez. Jeez, jeez, jeez. This is the one thing that gets you is the warding if we take a close look we have ward on the right hand side of the key and on this one the left hand side of the key and they are exactly uh the same height from each other 
the like. While I have seen some of these keys that you can have a groove down both sides, it makes that the blade of the key considerably weaker. Um, however, likely we can get uh, one of just the thinner keys because most of the time those thinner, like the 49B, I didn't bring one with me, but the 49B will typically go past it, sometimes with a little sanding on the edge. Um, but as long as they're all identical, I was just going to mark like left, right, left, right. But we know that there's six of each, so there's probably no real reason to do that. And the only other thing that I always warn people about on uh, antique glass knobs like that is to make sure you got to hold this still and then twist your glass knob. If it's really loose, uh, it's dangerous. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this 12 times and y'all will probably uh, see the video. So uh, bear with me for a minute. I have no idea how I'm gonna edit this or do it, but whatever. Ooh, so, ooh, springy, springy. So the biggest deal really, God, these are awful, awfully clean. To be so ugly on the outside, these are awfully clean inside. So that makes my job a lot easier. You know, the, the, only, the only difference in all of these locks, they're all the same. They all just use uh, one lever. The only difference that I've ever noticed, and Night Owl probably agree with me on this, is how they do their silly spring. Sometimes they're over here. Sometimes they're over here. Sometimes they're... This one's actually fairly interesting. I don't think I've ever seen one quite like that. Or I haven't seen one lately, anyway. Um, and, uh... Yeah, the other thing that'll happen with these is it will... Uh, aside from just this cracking, uh, this will, you know, tear up. But most likely, the biggest thing that happens is the spring blows up. This is common. Very common style. So it looks like all we have to do on most of these is probably going to be uh, like take out the bolt, which uh, when it's painted up like that can be very interesting. And clean up the bolt. But poof, all that's going to need is a light spray. So that's what I have all these pans for so that I can keep each one separately strip them down and hopefully they're all the same let's check this one out real quick see if it's the same way and then it's just a matter of making keys for them and then uh, repackaging yeah same same thing ah i always comfort people with these locks by saying you do know there's probably spiders in your lock right you do know that right so really all i've got here is just assessing, uh, uh, scraping off that front layer. So what do y'all think I should use for that? My dashing good luck, so we'll just make it dissolve. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, and package them back up, because we do have a casualty. We're going to look at the casualty before we move back over to our main cam. The casualty. Now, these were all mailed just like this in one big box so that's not good that's that wouldn't that wasn't the best way to do that so what i'm going to do there's no reason there's no real reason to have these with that uh with the mortise lock the knobs need to all be packed individually in paper because they're all the same there's no difference in any of the knobs you can take one set of knobs and use other places. However, there are two different knobs. This is, not all of them have the pretty knobs. And this is what I was talking about a minute ago. Two of them looks like, one, two, two of them have the, what I call the conical shape, which you see predominantly here in the South, especially when you have these older homes. Uh, but yeah, we got two of those, but all the other ones, 
just a shame. It makes me want to cry. Other than that, they all look identical. Except for the left, right, left, right. Um, so that's it. I'm going to get it. Uh, I already I went ahead and warned them about that. There's the rest of the glass shards in there. Our weapon of choice today is going to be this really old, cheapy, flathead screwdriver. It's going to be all I use for all of this because all we have to deal with is these flathead screws and scraping. So. Okay, so here we've got it suspended just a bit over the pan, the bottom of the surface, so that you can actually, so that it's not just sitting down on top of it. And then we're going to fill this up with our chemical. But first, we need to practice safe, safe things. We've got the pot boiling over here with water in it. We're going to put our eye goggles on. I hate these things. And our gloves on. And again, we're going to do six and six. We're going to go for 15 minutes each. We're boiling over here almost. And then 
we're going to dunk it in ice water.
time to get these out. So we are going to get water put over there. Go, 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 go. Okay, y'all, here is the test. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yuck, 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 yuck. Alright, we see how that did. Okay. See how the boiling water did. Didn't do anything. <laughs> Flight. There we go. There we go. It kind of worked. Maybe boil a little bit longer. Okay. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to 
Oh, well, not so much. Uh, let's check out this. Uh, that worked pretty well. I don't know if this would uh, scrape off without that, but it's coming off pretty well. Alright, let's uh, since this is going to get gooey, let's just go ahead and do all these that we can. So, we're going to have to boil some of them again, for sure. Because uh, uh, they didn't get all the, they didn't get all the paint. Yeah. Break it right off.
Okay, y'all. I'm filming this from a little bit further away so I don't have to have the air mask on. Air quality is pretty stout. That's the only problem with using a stripper. That and even though I was wearing gloves, uh, when I took it off, I guess a little bit got on my arm and I've got a little bit of a burn going on right there. I've already <laughs> washed it off. So that's the bad thing about chemicals. Also, the bad thing about chemicals is we are not going to be able to... We have this this toxic, really toxic water that we have to deal with afterward compared to not so toxic plain water with the lead paint in it. Um, so I went ahead and took the ones with that and put in there. I still have to do the caps or the faces of those. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to time lapse the rest of this. Boiling water would probably have worked maybe if I only had a few of them, but since I kind of messed myself up on this test because since I already have this out here, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it with this because to me this is work and it's a Sunday so I don't want to be doing this. So since I already have this out, since I already have messy water, you know if I was doing one or two maybe I would just do the boiling water trick but with this amount and this quantity of odd shaped stuff to get it done quickly as possible since I already had the stripper, since I already had the safety gear. Uh, I would go ahead and just use this stripper. The boiling water seemed to work except on a couple of them, that really, really heavy paint. I only boiled them for about 12, 13 minutes, and then I put them in the cold water. I don't know if putting them in the cold water was a mistake or not. That may have been a mistake, but half of them seemed to be cleaned up, the other half didn't. So what I'm going to do is we're going to time lapse the rest of this, and uh, yeah, this clean cut stripper, whatever brand it is, uh, 15 bucks for that little container, one quart, does not take up a lot, and obviously, so this little project right here alone, aside from the new safety gear, cost me, you know, 10 bucks in stripper or whatever, so boiling water may be a good way to do it, uh, a lot safer, I don't know if I'd say safer, but... Uh, yeah, I've already got this. This water looks like it's getting kind of crummy, so I'm going to go ahead and gear back up. Okay, y'all got them all stripped and uh, flushed them out outside with water and then I'm going to do a flush inside here with water, but for the most part, except for this interior still left, which should just peel off for the most part, uh, everything's cleaned up. Got a few spots we may have missed, right like there, but overall, we got the paint off of the face of them, so that's what we set out to do. That's what we did. Now I'm just going to lay them all out after I dry them and uh, let down my air dry and then pat dry with the paper or pat dry with paper towel and then air dry. So next stripper work pretty well. It actually stripped a lot more than I was hoping for in some cases. But I guess it did its job, right? Alright, well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, which I'm sure plenty of people will have suggestions on stripping paint, then feel free to post them in the comments. This is just one way. There are, of course, tons of different ways to do this, really, but that is that way. So, again, thanks for watching, y'all, and uh, have a great day. So we've got these uh, sorted out and uh, going to 
to lay them out in their appropriate boxes here. The only thing that we need to watch out for when we're putting them back together is make sure the right face cap goes with the right lock because you have now this isn't the right key I'm gonna make the key here in a little bit but uh, basically from one side you've got the ward and then when you flip it over the ward should be on that side I believe if we took a different face cap oh here we go so if we took the right handed one for instance See how the ward's on this side. When you go and flip it around, you'd need the ward on this side, which means it would have to be warded on this side instead of that side. So, just gonna have to be careful putting the face plates back with the right one. Uh, so I'm gonna get them all laid out. We're gonna speed that up uh, and spray them down. Okay, we got them all lubed. You notice I used the Super Tech lube because it, it performed really well in our lube off results as far as corrosion. So I used that to go ahead and wipe off this coating of uh, surface coating of rust. I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit. Go ahead and pull out these and start assembling them. I think we are mostly clean there. However, I do have to do these guys and I'm gonna do this with a wire brush on the bent uh, drill press so let's go do that you uh, we're gonna do a final coating of the lock shot because it also performed well long term like a Dremel bit. Not exactly the one I need, but <laughs> it'll work.
we're going to have a quick lesson on uh, warding and why these little cuts are in the key like this. Because we do have some different keys involved here. Aside from the left and the right, we've got four left and eight right. Aside from that, we also have different interior warding. So that's what the cuts on the sides of these keys are for. So when they go in, hopefully this, that's not, is that going to go in? Uh, uh, that's not going to go in. Let's use this for an example. Nope, that ain't going to go in either. Oh, shoot. Uh, do, we, do we have one that'll go in? Is there one in the house that will go into the keyway? Yes, maybe this one. Nope, dang it, I don't have one. Nope, well, shoot. E I finally found a good sample. Um, so, yeah, this is not quite right, but it'll work for illustration purposes. So, here we see the reason why you need those side cuts. And we can see this blank is actually cut down quite a bit to make work. So we have this. And then we have this. And if you can hold them up side by side, you can see these are higher than those. These are spread apart further than those. So we're going to have to either modify the key to make work across both of them and this is only on the interior face cap which means if you're coming in from one side it's got to be cut on this side to bypass it like that and if you're coming in the other way it's got to be cut on the front side to bypass it so with our keys we can actually cut it out wider like this to go across all of them there's two ways to, to fix this or you can hit this on a belt grinder. I've already touched base with the customer because we already have about four different keys. If we look here, here, and right about there, these three are all at different heights. So this is three different keys right here, even though they're all milled on the left for uh, the edge cut. So if we get a thin enough blank, that edge will not bother us either way and it all it has to be thin because these are pretty small diameter um so actually you know we could actually take this key and make it work across the three of these just by cutting it out wider or with permission from the customer because there's only four of these and what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark them with these so that we know which ones they are and uh, then we're going to wait on the customer to decide what he wants to do. I've told him that I could make it, I could narrow it down to one key if we get a thin enough key and we knock off. Uh, we may or may not need to knock that off. I'm not sure yet. This one's actually, this one's actually a whole different version too. So that's why a lot of keys come these are called skeleton keys where they're cut as far as possible this way this way some of them have an angled uh, so that it'll bypass multiple uh, but we can see there the three different uh, actually four different keys that's involved with these this one this one this one and this one so I'm going to get a photo of that so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about but in the meantime uh, as long as you have a key cut out wide enough you should be able to make it work across most of these some of them we may have to grind down and be a shame to have to do that but sometimes if the customer wants you to do that it has no effect on the actual lock itself so not a big deal 
All right, in the meantime, we're gonna wait on him to email us and then we're gonna get these back together and get a key made for him. All right, so I have a few choices to go through here and I initially wanted to use these five B keys right here because they are, uh, a, there's a lot less that has to be cut down to make work. However, I discovered that the, the, the shaft of it or the nose right here is too big of a diameter. So when you flip open a, uh, a key catalog, you will see measurements for the bit height and the diameter, and that's what the diameter. This 5B, I believe, is like a 20 diameter, and it's too big. It would be, you could maybe round that off somehow. It'd be a little bit difficult to do. I went through some of my other keys, like the 49B. Here's an example of like the edge cuts there. If you put this through, which it won't fit a lot. This is, these are actually, a little bit too all of them are a little bit too big to go through but you can see how that theory works here so this would be a case of maybe one of the lower ward cuts on the other ones um, but we can just open it all the way across uh, however what i'm going to do is uh just kind of out of necessity is i have a bunch of these keys so what we're going to do is take maybe three of them, I can't remember how many he wants. And uh, they're considerably bigger and thicker and fatter uh, compared to say a 3B, see where we have it flat all the way across. Um, so that fat is gonna have to be trimmed down. We're gonna have to trim the fat out of this sucker. All right, I had some other ones in the back um, and they're a little bit a little bit awkwardly long, but cut them down to fit better because they have a little bit better working area there. And they're so thin, we may not actually have to do those ward cuts. So let's cut one down and see what happens. Alright, let's go assemble 
one or two and see how we do one or two and see how we do I'm thinking uh, this little part right here is catching. Zoom crunch! <laughs> crunchy! Crunchy! JPD crunchy! <laughs> JPD crunchy! That was funny. Funny, funny, funny. Okay, let's assemble this one and uh, see how this one lines up as well. Yep, I'll go past that just barely. Oh, not quite. But it's alright. We can fix that in post production for sure. Alrighty, so we have a uh, little doodad that goes something like this. Can't remember exactly how it went. Maybe, maybe like this. Then like this. No, nope. maybe like that. Yep, just like that. Come down here, put this thing in. Put our bolt in. Just like that. This little spring went in here somehow. Okay, just like that. This went I think the short leg went here. Yeah, the long leg went over here. No, maybe not. And then this guy went like that. There we go. One complete lock. Beautiful. And we likely don't have to worry about cutting those wards out. So that's good. Ooh, that was that uh that's that was there. Oh, that's green. That's green. Green and a freeze. They don't have any left. They're all sitting on the street. <laughs> There's a bunch of girls in that car, too. Yeah, yeah, baby. Oh, 
Tighten that flathead down a little bit so that our case is tight. And that's going to make it a little stickier, probably. Um, so this key fits well. We can just uh, kind of transcribe it onto the other ones. May have to open it up just a little bit more to get... these far down because it's not quite not quite deep enough but that's not very far at all so that's no big deal and uh, then crank out a couple more what is a big deal is how some of them are a little sticky so uh, yeah, we're going to rough cut the three, I think we're doing three keys, and we're going to rough cut them, and uh, then we're going to uh, fine tune them all, and be done with it. Okay, the end of our journey is in sight, y'all. We have got this one put together, three keys made, three keys made. These are Taylor 561 antique keys whoa whoa come back come back <laughs> come back <laughs> come back antique keys for antique locks works on both sides thin enough to pass the ward without having to cut it so that's good uh, now it's just a matter of reassembling them all and double checking all three keys in each one just to make sure that we're good and don't have to do a little touch up on them but I don't think we're I don't think we're gonna have to I think it's I think it's not a big deal I think we're good I think I've got enough clearance so and we can see the finish that's left over from the cleaning so let's go ahead and speed this part up Hey, we are done. I don't know where we ended off, but yeah, I had to replace one screw there. Had to flip the hand on that one. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I don't know why I left this one in the locked position. So there, unlocked, unlocked, unlocked. This one unlocked. And got three keys for them. Pink tags means they are checked and we are about to start wrapping up these handles I'm gonna do a separate little doodad on these handles but otherwise yay the saga of the dozen bit key locks is done so if you have any questions or comments on this what is probably gonna be an extremely long video once I get done editing uh, leave them in the comment section thanks for watching guys and we'll catch y'all next video